Rising is a devised theatre production. It's been devised by students at Byron Bay High School who have elected Year 11 Drama. I was approached by Dave Houston from Full On Theatre asking if there would be any opportunity for him to work with students in the school this year. Rising is about rising floodwaters, rising temperature. I went to the protest that the students organised and it was so moving and they were so activated and so there's direct lines from that protest that's made it into the show. So I guess it's also about rising up and trying to challenge uh, what's happening and just have that youth voice. The kids have been amazing because they've created a lot of impros and then we've adjusted the scenes, done another impro and threaded this kind of uh, a narrative that weaves through with different storylines chopping and changing. The diaries um, we did as kind of a process diary throughout the process um, of devising the performance. So it kind of started off with collecting a bunch of true stories that we found kind of interesting. And then we brought all those stories in and lots of them got performed um, in our class. Dave got the students talking about issues that they were passionate about that were local issues as well as global, but the focus became very local. And that was everything from, you know, our rising house prices and people being pushed out of the Shire to uh, climate change. So we talked about these things, we brainstormed them, we did a bit of improvising, we found true stories um, and brought them in and shared them, and then the floods came. The school was closed for a week. Many students and staff were um, on the ground in Lismore or in Mullumbimby or in South Moolumba, South Golden Beach, Broadwater, helping uh, people who had been displaced with the cleanup. Others were helping in other ways, so working in sandwich lines, preparing food. There were lots of jobs, obviously, that people engaged in in the community, ferrying goods from place to place, supporting in evacuation centres. And we came back with some really intense stories to share. And from those stories, obviously, came incredibly resilient characters and moving narratives and powerful messages. I kind of threw myself in the deep end and would have really intense conversations about how real all of the situations were and um, so a lot of interviewing and researching and uh, like having that responsibility of taking all of those really heavy situations on board was kind of huge. You know some of these are stories from real people really experiencing these stories and you can, you can only imagine you know, these are almost these aren't exaggerated. These are almost downplayed. You can't because you can't put that proper ideas of death and all that kind of. You can't convey that on a stage like they've experienced. And it's just, it's just brutal to think about what those the true experiences of this story. Dad, Dad, there's water in the back seat. We gotta get out. The door. One of the students, Mel, has uh, her story was told. So one of the other students interviewed Mel about her experiences with the fires at Mount Nardi in 2019, 2020, and she told her story and then was able to um, become herself on stage and reenact the moment they had to evacuate, which was um, very, very powerful for her and for us and for the audience. With representing myself in the play, I think it, it's powerful for me. It's also kind of a therapeutic thing, having to go back and almost relive it in a, in a way, but sharing my experience with the audience and the people around me. This is an emergency alert from the Bushfire Emergency Service. Please stay near your phone to receive important updates. Mum? Did you get those texts? 
They're saying there's a bushfire. We're gonna be okay? I live up near Minion Falls, surrounded by bush. It's normally beautiful, but the sky was going orange and the air tasted of smoke. Sparky, come on. Sparky, where are you? The Mount Bloody fires are out of control and heading towards Tuntable Falls Road. If you're in the area, leaving early is your safest option. Sparky, come on. Where are you? Mom, Mom, they're saying the wind might change. The whole sky was now alight with the glow of fire. Smoke was everywhere. Ash was beginning to fall and smoke was hurting my eyes. Emergency update. If you're in the area of Minion Falls, leave immediately towards Byron Bay. I went inside and started packing my things, my clothes, my computer, and a teddy bear that my dad gave me when I was four. I could hear sirens. Mom! Mom! So one of the stories was based on a story from 2017 from myself and my family in South Mwilumba. Um, it was the, the highest um, level of flooding they'd had ever, and it was called a once in 100 year event. Of course, South Mwilumba this year was inundated further and they were in, you know, all completely displaced that area of Mwilumba. Um, the houses were completely inundated. So that story uh, of Sam and Darren um, began as me, because I was sitting out the back with some of the students talking with them and they were sharing some stories, but none of them had been involved and they wanted to know what that was like. So my story of the rescue at 2 a.m. with my two-year-old son on my back, we also had a cat, um, was our story. Um, and it, pretty much the dialogue is very, very accurate. Another one, another one. <laughs> please be here, please. please. Look out for that tree. Come on, please. What the fuck is that? Oh, I think it's a fence. Oh, shit, we're stuck. Back up, straight away. No, 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 don't leave, don't leave. I have a kid. Wait, we're not gonna leave, okay? We just can't get any closer. Well, then we'll come to you, we'll swim. Yeah. It's not safe. Well, just try again. Right. Okay, no bags, drop the bag now. It's got everything in it, it's got my passports and our clothes Nothing. and everything. Nothing, just you, drop it. Now, can you get the kid off your back, take it out of the carrier and pass it over the water to us? What's the kid's name? Thomas, his name's Thomas. Okay, reach out, pass him over. I can't. Yes, do you want you me can. to do it? No, no, I've got it. Hey, Thomas. It's okay, mate. Here you go. You're okay, little man. Put the slack jacket on. It's all right, Thomas. Mummy's here. Okay, Mum, I'm going to need you to step down and grab my arm, okay? Trust me. I hope that it gets taken in the correct way and that people gain perspective on people's situations throughout the floods as well and the fires. I think that because the fires were so long ago, it's been almost disregarded. So it'll be really good for people to realise that, yes, people are still being, you know, affected in long-term ways. I was affected by the, the floods. In that. I, I was living in South Golden Beach, you know, a, bit, a little bit lesser known, but the whole house got up. Done. So I was, I was sitting there in the, in the fire parts, and I, I, I was sympathetic. But when the floods, when the flood scenes were hitting, I was really lucky enough not to have as much work to do on the desk on those scenes because I would have not been able to put myself together for that. It's a very significant and important play to watch for me. Well, the song was originally written in like the first COVID lockdowns. So it was kind of just a whole like accumulation of like all these things are happening, but it was mainly based around COVID. And then we were having like a discussion session in class and I told Dave that I had written a song and he said, oh, like I want to hear it. And then we kind of worked together and there was like lots of variations of it. It kind of took like a really long time to get it all sorted out. Um, from changing it to not being as COVID based to more like floods and fire based. But yeah, it was a really nice process of songwriting. It's um, never taken me that long to kind of like finalize the song before. So it was really nice like delving into it and stuff like that. It's the 
same tears falling You lost everything It rolls in fiery embers The water it spread through your streets And now you'll always remember Well the bushfires were blazing We barely survived Now we're all going crazy Cause floods have arrived Climate is rising and oceans are too I'm just a kid, I don't know what to do Oh, it's helpless, hopeless and reckless What a mess I wish we had listened and learned From our past mistakes oh, What will it take? Theatre's an amazing vehicle for change and for community um, to showcase resilience. I know in a way because theatre can take something that's, that's been destroyed through fire and flood and turn it into something beautiful. So I was working with the mental wellness and uh, mental health professionals local to our area. So we're quite aware of the impact of creating a production like this and mostly based on uh, true stories and working, particularly working with verbatim theatre, we had a lot of words coming directly from the mouths of people who had experienced the disasters that we were bringing to light. So we don't take that lightly and we were working quite closely with um, different community groups so that we had people available for the cast but also for the crew and for the volunteers and staff that were working with us and especially for the audience. I feel working in a group I feel really supported. Um, all like I work with my friends and it's you know such a beautiful process and we all get to connect as our characters but also as ourselves and being able to be on stage and feel comfortable and not feel, oh, I'm, I don't know this person, I don't know how they're going to react and very familiar with like the people I'm acting with and I, I really enjoy the group dynamic. I don't think I could pull it off by myself or and without the support of my friends, I would, yeah, I don't know where I'd be. I never really talked to all. Uh, most, if not all, of this crew. I had never really conversed with these people properly, and you know now I've got proper friends and some some really some really kind people who have helped me through tough times in my life. Honestly, like so if I wasn't if it wasn't for some of these people, I would have probably not have been in as good a place as I am and now. I'm much more positive and healthy person in general because of the people I've met through this production. I've seen a transition in the kids as their confidence grows. We've done some theatre training skills. A little bit of touching on well-being. Yeah. Don't film over there. So, uh, yeah, I didn't even know. Ladies, in there. So, no, she's not in there. Okay. Oh no. And just okay. Okay. Bob, head to the side. Which side? This side. Shimmy shoulders. Push demons down. I'm actually feeling kind of excited. Yesterday when we performed at school, it was kind of in front of a lot of people that I knew, but I wasn't really close with, so I felt really awkward about it. Like, I wasn't super comfortable, but I think tonight I just know I have to take my time with all my life and stuff. And it's kind of exciting, like, performing at, like, Barron Community Theatre. I don't know, it's a bit next level. And I think a lot of us haven't performed in front of, like, a full crowd before either. Especially since last year, like, COVID and stuff. So it'll be fun. The kids are really together, you know, they're some really talented kids and uh, some musicians, some dancers, everyone can act really well, so it's exciting. And we, we had different groups that could, um, there was a, a writing group, a dance group, a music group and a production group, so they, they almost like had a second string to their bow. And in ideal world, there'd be more time to really work on those groups and the skills, but yeah, everyone's been a theatre maker, so I guess everyone's been writing and editing on the floor, on the, on the stage. The piano story, the character of Brooke, that is based very much on a real event. That was a woman that I met during the clean-up in East Lismore, who I found crying on her doorstep when her piano was being smashed. Um, uh, we used her Facebook posts, her writing um, after the flood about the piano 
uh, and also her poetry that she'd written. She's a writer so, um, and a photographer. She's a very creative person, so her words were wonderful to use. Um, and the words that, you know, the text and the dialogue that happened in the moment very much is, is what I remember her saying. How are you feeling, Liz? I'm feeling good, yeah. Okay. I'm, all, I'm, I'm feeling all right. The woman who I am is, like, the character that I am, the woman is actually coming to watch it tonight, so I'm stressing a bit out about that, but oh well. <laughs> we move. So it's her story? Yeah. Telling. Yeah. The, um, her piano, and it got, like, she was so, like, emotionally, so had so many, like, emotions connected to it, and then it got flooded and had to get destroyed, and Miss went and helped her clean it up, so that's where she got the story from, so. But yes, she's coming to watch it tonight, so. I've got a... Put on a good performance. <laughs> hey, uh, my Matt, my about this lady? Yeah, sure. Excuse me. You need any help? No, I'm just taking a break. You sure, love? I actually, um, I do need some help smashing up an old piano to get it down to the rubbish pile. Would you be able to do that for me? Yeah. Yeah, uh, hey, uh, Matt, can you go grab the tools, the crowbars and mallets? Yeah, I'm on it. You sure it's stuff? Yeah, she... It's totally inundated. The keys are all swollen and the panelling is warped and split and the fucking fridge fell on it. <laughs> Shit, well, uh, no worries. What's your name? Brooke. Okay, Brooke. I'm Mick and the other bloke's from Matt. We'll take a look at it. Just over there. Thanks. Hey, uh, Matt, come through the side door here. We'll, uh, get out of that way. Yeah, no worries, mate. The crowbar's no good. I'll go and get my chainsaw. Uh, hey, love. So, got this nice piece. I thought maybe you could turn it into an artwork, uh, part of a door. I can tell you this, that the Huon Pine of a 200-year-old piano smells as fresh under the chainsaw as it did the day the tree that gave it dropped. That when its long-held panels give way, your childhood will hang in the dank and the loss. I can't write you a flood story. There is nothing left to know, except this that when the world comes to take herself back, we can't choose what we hold. I cried my eyes out. No, the piano thing. That was your piano. That was my piano. That's what it is to have that story um, projected back at you. I met um, Sim when I, in the scene where she was crying while it was being cut up, that was when I met Sim. She came over across the road just with a friend to see if they could give me a hand and I was sitting there crying while they were cutting her up. <laughs> so, so yeah, that was... I've got a poem. <laughs> I have, uh, in that show, I was a part with me. Yes. Yes. And that's kind of cool. <laughs> You're all famous, aren't you? <laughs> Thanks for sharing this. And that was beautiful. Very, very. It's like a little, little funeral for her. <laughs> I feel very anxious because I don't want to make her like come off as someone else. But I also feel very privileged that I'm able to play like such an important character and that it was so real like she went like she experienced what I'm acting so I'm super excited and I really hope I get to meet her if she comes because then it will kind of 
not validate, but I'll be able to really connect in the end of, you know, who I was playing and like some closure on how important it was. And yeah, I'm very excited. Five hours had passed. There were canoes, boats, kayaks going past. I saw tables, chairs, paintings, gas bottles, a drum kit. It felt like the whole world was passing me. You ready to get in the boat? Born ready, ready to rock. <laughs> Rapunzel, Rapunzel, I'll let down my hair and you boys can climb up and save me. <laughs> I climbed towards one of the boats, ducking under the power lines. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. You are a lovely gentleman. <laughs> Elvis has left the building. Repeat. Elvis has left the building. I loved it. Yeah, so much fun. It's amazing. I was really moved. I've been tearing up and I'm just so proud to be represented as Elvis leaving the building. Hey. Not that I'm no. Elvis. <laughs> or <right>. Rapunzel. <laughs> I feel so honoured to be able to play such a beautiful woman and yeah, be able to share her story and you know, she brings such light to... And it was a know. really positive part of the show. Yeah. After that huge emotional scene where there was a lot of yeah. emotions, I was yeah. really impacted. To have something light like that was the yeah. spirit that I felt Dave transferred yes. into the show yeah. where instead of feeling the fear and hearing people yelling help and the, sight, the, the fire alarms going, and the rain pouring down, and so just intense. that shift yeah. and she's having a little fun, yeah. Rapunzel, <laughs> and the men in their motorboats yeah. going, what, what's she saying? Yeah. And I'm at the window, Rapunzel. <laughs> no, it's yeah, so amazing how, you know, you're able to bring laughter and, you know, light yeah. to such Instead an Instead of the fear and yeah. help and help. No, and I, I you and know. you did that really well. Oh, thank you. You brought that to the role. Uh, the show was massive trigger. We live at Minion Falls. I had to send off a couple of my kids while we held the fort and wondered if we were going to die. And this story was so real. It was the ash raining on us was real. So the stories were like, thank you for telling the stories. They were painful to live through. And um, the resilience of these kids who had to experience everything that we had to and to see that they're passionate about the environment. They know why it's all happening. And some of us have been protesting forever. And I guess this next generation are gonna be the ones that are in the biggest trouble. Because they're living here in the Northern Rivers. There's gonna be more floods. Um, we're surrounded by bush. And the reality is, um, this is what we're living. And it's really beautiful to have seen the kids. They watch us, so they hear the stories. And to, to see them show the world what we've been through is really powerful. And it's like our stories are being told through our kids. And yeah, it's, it's a real honor to have watched that. Well, I've had so many aha moments. The first one was when Sim said they're really talented, this bunch of year 11s, and they'll be really good at the project. And then just in the first two or three sessions going, wow, this is incredible. And I just kept on discovering more skills that people had with music and acting and creating. And so that was a big aha moment. Um, the other one was, I guess, from, you always have to trust that a project's gonna write itself and a story is gonna eventuate and something's gonna come. And it's easy to freak out that it's not gonna happen. And, you can potentially think, oh, this is going to be the one project where it just does not work at all. But I remember the aha moment once the floods hit and we just spent a whole session just talking about the floods and what people had done. And, and that was also um, pretty inspiring to hear what everyone had done and the efforts of it. The response was um, really quite overwhelming, but not surprising, I think. I, it was easier for myself and Dave and Meg to look at the work and see its power to move people and to make people think and to impact on the community. I think the biggest impact it's had on the community is they are realising 
how serious these teens are about their message, about um, affecting um, change and about demanding change on a, a political level and a social level. I think that's been the biggest thing that audiences have taken away from it, from them, is wow, these guys are serious. <laughs> and they're not going to stop um, making noise. As um, Lola said, you cannot silence the raging future. They are the raging future. And I really think that was communicated very effectively. When we're in theatre, we have to be empathetic. We have to be somebody else. We have to put ourselves in somebody else's shoes. Theatre does it in a way that requires you to actually live those, as, as closely as you can, live those experiences. I mean, this production is an example of a really important piece of theatre. We've said that it's healing for people, like it's trying to teach people who've never been there or never experienced it what it's like to live in a community that um, suffers from extreme flooding and, and bushfires. So that's powerful and important. Theatre, drama, it's live, it's in the moment, it's heightened, it's real. People have to really delve into experiences that they might not ever um, deal with in any other situation, right? And they're doing it for art, but they're doing it, it's a very powerful form of art. They're doing it in order to create change. Acting and theatre is two separate things, both carry with them really, um, really powerful experiences for actors and audience. And that's the last thing I think that I need to say that's crucial is you have to have an audience. There is no theatre without an audience. So it brings people together. And now you'll always remember Well the bushfires were blazing We barely survived Now we're all going crazy Cause floods have arrived Climate is rising And oceans are too I'm just a kid I don't know what to do Oh it's helpless Hopeless And reckless What a mess I wish we had listened Hey. 